The burrowing owl is the spring and summer resident of the prairies of Colorado. Here, the bird we believe to be the male has just arrived back at the nest mound, carrying a clump of dirt in his foot. He's broken it apart, looking for grubs and insects, which are an important source of food. Burrowing owls are one of only four North American owl species to exhibit a difference in color plumage between the adults and the juveniles. Mom emerges to keep a close watch on her brood. The inquisitive babies have a buffy, solid chest and belly area rather than the horizontal streaks of the adult, and they also lack the adult's white eyebrows. Both babies and adults are generally dull brown in color, and the adults are spotted, which help them stay camouflaged on the prairie. They do not sleep in a tree during the day and hunt at night. Instead, these owls are ground dwelling, making their home on the short grass prairies of Colorado and sleeping underground in abandoned prairie dog, badger, and snake holes. This ground dwelling species will hunt insects, particularly dung beetles, as well as grasshoppers, cicadas, other invertebrates, mice, and small songbirds. They discourage predation in their burrows by badgers and coyotes by lining the entrance with bison, antelope, or deer dung to disguise their scent. There are old tales from the pioneer days of Colorado of bull snakes, burrowing owls, and prairie dogs all sharing the same subterranean home, but these are just fanciful tales of legend. The great horned owl is the largest and the most common owl found in the United States. Like the red-tailed hawk, they are found in every U.S. state except Hawaii. However, these owls actually range from Alaska down to South America and can exist in a wide variety of landscapes. They are very well adapted to the Denver metro area and can utilize a huge variety of food sources. They are also the very earliest nesting raptor each year with courtship beginning around early December, nest building around Christmas, and in some cases, large babies are fledging by the middle of February. Here you can see the young bird is about the same size as its parent, but still has natal down and just the beginnings of the sharp feather tufts. The young owl carefully watches the parent tear off bits of meat and then eagerly snatches them from the adult's beak. Soon this owl will be expected to feed itself, although it is already capable of flight. Near the end of the segment, you can see the adult pay attention to something off camera and the large yellow eyes, which are 100 times more sensitive to light than the human eye, are clearly focused on something. Both owls also circle their heads, an adaptation for adjusting the sound sensitive feathers on their face, called the facial disc, to better enable them to hear what might be making the noise. The American kestrel is the smallest species of falcon found in the United States. They live in Colorado year round, despite our cold winter temperatures and snow. Males weigh between three and four ounces, and females are four to five ounces. In addition to the size difference, there is also a color difference between males and females. Males have gray wings, rusty tails, with a single black stripe near the tip. Female kestrels have a rusty back and tail with black stripes from their neck, across their back, and down the length of the tail. Both sexes have two malar stripes or marks, one 
beneath the eye and one behind. The black malar mark is common to many species of falcons. It helps cut down on the glare from the sun and enables falcons to better see and catch birds as they dive through the sky. The keen eyesight of falcons is critical for the high-speed maneuvers they make while hunting. The visual acuity of falcons is approximately eight times better than humans. They see in color, and their ability to detect motion is also far greater than the human eye. Kestrels hunt mice and small mammals insects and reptiles during the summer, and also catch birds, such as sparrows. The old name for the kestrel was the sparrowhawk, but it is a true falcon, as evidenced by the long pointed wings, long tail, and specially designed beak and nasal opening called the nair. This close-up view of the peregrine falcon demonstrates many of the remarkable adaptations that falcons have for hunting. Even the round nasal opening has a special baffle called a tubercle, which breaks up the air rushing into the bird's sinuses, lungs, and air sacs. The upper and lower beak both have a stair step or notch shape called the tomial tooth. This is used to sever the spinal cord in the neck of a bird that the falcon has just brought to the ground. A female peregrine will weigh just under two pounds, and a male is about one and a half pounds. Both sexes are capable of taking prey as large as geese. The old name for the peregrine falcon is the duck hawk, and they prefer to live near areas where there is water. Peregrines have also thrived in North American cities where they lay eggs on the top of skyscrapers, which resembles a natural cliff environment. There, they find plenty of pigeons, starlings, and other songbirds to hunt. The word peregrine means foreigner, wanderer, stranger, or pilgrim, and these birds are found worldwide on every continent except Antarctica. The Swainson's hawk, a close cousin of the red-tailed hawk, is the most common beautio or soaring hawk which we see in the Denver metro area during spring and summer. These lovely birds arrive from South America by the middle of April, but by the end of September, they have mostly vanished from the prairies and plains of Colorado. Swainson's hawks will breed as far north as regions like Calgary. Telemetry studies have proven that these birds can make that long and hazardous trip in as few as eight days. Swainson's hawks can be distinguished from red-tailed hawks by their slightly smaller size, longer, narrower wings, and shorter tails. Adult Swainson's hawks have a solid brown chocolate bib covering their breast area, and a pale belly, which can range from snow white to a peach or terracotta color. The leading edge of the underside of the wing, called the patagium, is also pale, while the trailing edge is dark. This light and dark color pattern is extremely visible, even if the bird is a couple of thousand of feet up in the air. In some parts of the western U.S., Swainson's hawks are nicknamed the grasshopper hawk for their habit of following behind tractors, combines, and other farm equipment working through a field. The birds will follow the equipment much like gulls follow a fishing boat, waiting to catch insects and rodents which are kicked up by the machinery. The Swainson's hawk is the only budio in the U.S. that takes two years to reach its adult plumage rather than one. Swainson's hawks start flying around the end of July and have only until the Labor Day time frame to perfect hunting and soaring skills when they must then join adults for the long journey to South America. The young birds here have not quite started flying, but they must do so shortly.
The red-tailed hawk is the largest and the most common soaring hawk in America. They are found in every U.S. state except Hawaii. While there are many different color morphs or variations of this bird, what they all have in common is the fact that they do not get their red tail feathers until they are one year old after molting out their first year or juvenile plumage. Here you can see the difference between the adult and offspring hawk. The parent bird has a deep brown eye and beautiful brick red tail feathers with one thin black stripe about one inch from the tip of the tail. The young bird, just recently out of the nest, has a pale gray or tawny eye, a white breast, and dull brown feathers with a dusty brown tail featuring many black stripes. Red-tailed hawks will hunt everything from grasshoppers to jackrabbits weighing almost 10 pounds, but they do best in open spaces interspersed with trees, including cities and suburbs. Here the young hawk has finished a good meal of rabbit, which you can see in the bulge on his breast. That is the crop, which is the sack for the temporary storage of food, and it helps balance raptors out for flight. In urban environments, they often hunt mice, other small animals, cottontail rabbits, and occasionally squirrels. Even though red-tailed hawks are capable of catching birds such as robins, blue jays, and pigeons, they usually leave bird hunting to their smaller relatives, the excipiters or the forest hawks with short wings and long tails, such as the Cooper's hawk. The Cooper's hawk, named after ornithologist William Cooper, is the mid-range size of the three excipiters or forest hawks found in Colorado. The smallest is the sharp-shinned hawk, which is nearly identical to the Cooper's hawk in appearance. The largest is the northern goshawk. In the late 1990s, Cooper's hawks exploded in numbers in central and suburban Denver neighborhoods. They have flourished with the increasing numbers of ring-necked or Eurasian collared doves, a favorite food source. Cooper's hawks are most often the birds that one will see zipping through a backyard attempting to grab songbirds off of a feeder or bird bath. Their long tails make them highly maneuverable and extremely fast. This fledgling Cooper's hawk still has downy feathers on its head and its eye has not yet turned yellow, but is the pale blue of a baby. Adult Cooper's hawks have deep red eyes with slate gray backs and a darker cap. Juvenile Cooper's hawks, about four to five months old, have an eye which is yellow. Their feathers on the back are brown and their breasts and bellies are cream colored with vertical brown markings rather than the horizontal peach markings of the adult. It takes close to five years for an adult Cooper's hawk to get the deep red eye visible on the parent birds, but they do get their adult feathers at one year of age. This bird is probably one and a half to two years old with adult feathers, but a dark yellow eye, which will eventually turn deep orange and then red. The golden eagle is one of two eagle species found in North America. In the U.S., most of the eagles live west of the Mississippi River. They are large soaring birds of open country, and the grasslands, canyons, plains, deserts, and cliffs of the Rocky Mountain West are their preferred habitat. The eagle shown here is part of a long-established breeding pair in southwest Denver, inhabiting the eastern edge of Highlands Ranch. He easily steps off the cliff, demonstrating his mastery of the air and supreme soaring skills. Golden eagles are primarily mammal hunters, and in Colorado, their favorite foods include jackrabbits, cottontail rabbits, 
prairie dogs, and various species of ground squirrels. They get their name from the beautiful light-colored golden amber feathers on the top of their head and the back of the neck. Here you can see them waving in the breeze, and these feathers are known as hackles. Golden eagles are found worldwide in the Northern Hemisphere, in places like Scotland, Ireland, Central Europe, and throughout Asia. Eagles are renowned for their keen vision. The gray flash you see across the bird's eye here is the nictitating membrane, or third eyelid. It cleans and moistens the eye, and also protects it against injury. The bald eagle is one of 10 members of the sea eagle genus Haliatus found around the world. Our national symbol ranges from Alaska throughout Canada and the United States down to the Mexico border. These birds will scavenge throughout their lives and are accomplished fishermen. They also chase ducks, shorebirds, and waterfowl, so careful attention to feathers their cleanliness and health is very important. While most people think of bald eagles with snow white heads and tails, brown wings and bodies, they don't all start out that way. These birds are fledgling and getting ready to leave the nest. As you can see, they have black beaks, brown eyes, and brown and white throughout their wings and body, as well as their tails. These birds take an average of four to five years to achieve their adult plumage, and many different appearances and color variations are seen during that transition. Most eagles begin breeding at five years of age, even though they may retain a bit of brown in their heads and tails. In areas of high prey abundance with experienced parents, bald eagles may fledge three healthy babies. Here, this rambunctious youngster flaps his wings and jumps in the nest, building muscles and practicing the skills he'll need to master the skies.